Hi, everyone, uh, and I would like to introduce you to um, a big friend of mine and a former colleague, uh, Max Gallo, uh, that is uh, currently staff engineer uh, in The Zone. Uh, the Zone was the company where we met uh, and uh, where we share a lot of adventures, especially on microfrontends. So this series on microfrontends will uh, share with you the insights from the trenches of different people. Max uh, is uh, my first guest, uh, and I hope that you will enjoy the format. So, uh, Max, welcome to the session. Thank you. Thank you. Super excited to be the first guest. Yeah, it's an honor for me to have you also because we share a lot of uh, adventures uh, in the zone and uh, building microfrontends together. Uh, so do you want to introduce yourself so at least everyone knows uh, all the greatness that you have done in the last few years? Greatness. Let I'll try, I'll try. Um, I'm Max. I'm based in Italy, in Rome. I've been in London for around seven years and I moved last year. I work in the zone. I'm a distinguished engineer in the zone where I work across the entire front end. Uh, front end in the zone, it's a relatively complex space. The zone is a sports streaming service and front end for us means 40 plus different devices between mobile, HTML based, TV, gaming console, set of boxes, you name it. So it's not the usual uh, the usual front end, but it's a pretty exciting front end, I would say. I fully agree with you. That was uh, one of the main reasons uh, uh, that I want to join the zone back in the days. Uh, but fun fact before we move ahead, uh, there was uh, one day that um, Max and I, we, we released, let's say, the first version of, of the zone, uh, publicly, Mike from Tense uh, of the zone. And um, uh, we shared the stage uh, in a conference in Amsterdam uh, that was uh, front-end developer love, if I remember well. I think now they changed it. Yeah, yeah, I think it was that one. Yeah, that yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> we spent roughly 35 40 minutes on the stage and then we spent the following two hours answering question at the booth because the the zone was sponsoring the conference and it was funny because uh we didn't even eat so it was like the second talk and then we spent like two hours talking with the bazillion of people during that do you remember that max yes i remember and like the, the feeling getting outside of those two hours talk felt like okay we 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 definitely hit the right chord. We definitely hit the right note because it was something that people wanted to talk about. They were like, oh, how do you do this? Are you duplicating this? How do, do you do that? So there was very, uh, a lot of like need of talking of, of those arguments. So yeah, that, that was fun. Definitely spent more time, way more time talking with people than on stage. Uh, so let's start with the interview. Uh, so we want to share, let's say, uh, your learnings from the trenches. So I would start, uh, first of all, asking, uh, let's say, an overall uh, feeling about uh, the microfrontends panorama currently in the zone. Do you think that uh, reached the goal that we had in mind back in the days? Do you feel that is helping the company uh, in what they uh, are trying to achieve? So I think microfrontend it Macro frontends in the zone where has been an, an evolution. We started with an idea, it, it evolved, it changed a little bit, but, but some of the core fundamental pillars are still there, uh, are still there and they are still uh, being used and uh, still we're still benefiting for them. Uh, I think when, when we started, we had a very clear goal and objective and uh, we'll probably dive in, in, into the details also late, late, later on, I guess, but we wanted to have very uh, independent teams. That was a must-have for us. So we did favor a concept of isolation between teams and making the teams as much as autonomous as possible. And uh, that has been a mantra over the, the years uh, that got... Uh, slightly changed in some cases, evolved, but as per this morning, we are still deploying independently our microphone tents. We are still leveraging the same uh, benefits that we uh, we had in mind as a goal five or six years ago now. So I would say yes, uh, they worked for us in very short and condensed answer, but. Uh, so they and they are still working. They are still working. 
Oh, so that, that's great to hear that. So tell us uh, a bit more about the benefits from your point of view, obviously, because uh, you have uh, you were there, you were the uh, third tech person hired in the zone. I was the second one. So <laughs> we have seen quite a lot, but you are still there. So you have seen the evolution of, of the platform uh, and uh, also the success of the platform, because uh, just to uh, remember everyone, the zone is a live sports streaming platform uh, that reach millions of, uh, uh, let's say, people and, and users that want to watch uh, live sport uh, all over the world. Yeah, so I think the, um, the initial uh, problem to solve challenge to solve uh, the, the, the zone was be ready for hyper growth. We wanted to start a department uh, which didn't exist. The engineering department of the zone was not there, was not a thing. Uh, but we were lucky enough to know the, the scope of the problem because there was already an application built by another company which was used in the product. So we were in a very lucky position to say, okay, we, we want to start from scratch and we want to start with some knowledge. We're not starting from scratch on a project we haven't got an idea about. We are starting from scratch, a blank page, on something we were kind of aware, which were some of the bottlenecks. And the situation was like, I was hired as third person and we were envisioning the next six months to 12 months as a constant hire of new teams on top of new teams because we wanted to ramp up the engineering department. So speaking about front end, what was our main goal was to having those teams not stepping on each other toes. We didn't want them to wait for another team because we didn't know at which stage some of the teams would have entered the Dazon space. Some other teams may have arrived months later. And so any, any sort of uh, coordination across those teams uh, was seen from us as something that uh, as something that had a cost, a cost that we were not uh, ready to um, uh, to take into account. So we we uh, we put everything and all our real resources to ensure that we were able to onboard a new team to work on a specific part of the application without affecting all the others. So that for us was probably the closest thing we get we we. We, we ever got to hypergrowth. I'm not sure there is an agreed uh, definition of hypergrowth, but we went from three developers to 500 in three to four years, probably less. Uh, so that was for us a pretty huge growth, call it hyper or not. Uh, so we needed to remove any friction between teams and microcontents was a natural choice to fulfill that desire. That, that's great to hear that and remember this. Yes, definitely we're less than three, four years <laughs> when we reach that massive growth. Um, one question that they usually have very often uh, with people talking with me about Mac Frontends is uh, how do I convince my boss to, to do Mac Frontends? So I would like that you share your perspective on how we did that back in the days. Uh, I think that it's a good question because Quite often we, we talk about technical solution, but then the real life is that someone has to approve the technical solution. So we have to be able to, to sell and to, and to back our ideas with numbers, with data. And uh, our main concern was um, to fulfill the growth of the, of the company in, uh, in several ways. So I remember that at some point we had to, um, uh, we had to onboard uh, uh, some consultancy agency because we were not growing fast enough as the company required. And we were able to fulfill that because of what we had put in place. So a new team of consultant or internal can could have just joined. So that was me was the key for selling it to someone. Like, what are you trying to achieve? What is your goal? Is your goal purely technical? Yes and no. For our specific case, the goal was partially technical and in my opinion, more organizational or company related. 
the technical aspect was a, a, a way to fulfill a company need. The company need was very high growth, hyper growth, and we picked the, the right tool. So we sold the idea that the price we are paying for this is maybe a little bit of duplication, maybe some onboarding that we had to, to do with the different teams. But at that price, if you put that on a scale, what we were getting was independence, not only of development, but of releases. And that is something that the business quite uh, take as an important aspect because they will not back you up if you try to sell any um, um, any change in the code that doesn't have an aspect important to your business. That, that's great to hear that. Before we, we uh, deep dive into the, the deployment, because I think there there is a lot to un uh, unwind, um, can you give like an elevator pitch on how uh, you have structured the uh, current design architecture for microfrontends? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we started focusing on the uh, subdomain of Dazon. So Dazon is a live sports streaming company. Our customers come to us for watching videos. So that is the main experience. But as per every single business on this planet, your main business has surrounded by a lot of other contexts, such as the authentication, the L pages, my account, all those that may seem as not the most important part of the business, whether you like it or not, are needed. They are there. So focusing solely on your on 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 the video player, it it will not bring you over the the, the line over the finish line. So we had to consider all these places, all these different part of the application, and what we did was to split the uh, Dazon domain into subdomain, uh, following principles from uh, from DDD, and uh, we had to arrive into every single subdomain with different uh, um, not 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 to arrive we split every single sub, sub subdomain into teams so a team was responsible for a part of the application which was um, owned end to end i'll i'll go for an an, an example landing pages you'd go to www.dazon.com, you get a nice landing page uh, when as a business we try to uh, show you how cool we look, which is the amazing sports we've got. And that is a subdomain by itself. So a single team was responsible for the landing pages and was in charge of anything from the loading of, of, of the page, from the footer, the, the header, if the page was low, if the page was fast. So all of that was owned by a team. We take our subdomain and we move to the next one, which is the authentication. So another team was responsible for that. And uh, this other team had the goal of allowing you as a user to sign in or sign up into, uh, into the zone. Uh, this is probably a longer answer than just an elevator pitch, That's but funny. this is how we started. And it evolved since then with other changes and uh, to fulfill company needs. But this, this, this is how we, we started, so focusing on subdomain of the main applications. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I, I often recommend uh, to everyone to look into how uh, their customers are uh, using their platform, because uh, if they look into uh, the technical side, they might risk to end up with uh, uh, distributed components more than uh, than a micro front end implementation. That, that's the real challenge. Um, so if you want to, let's say, highlight for the audience uh, uh, a couple, two, three, uh, whatever you uh, you prefer, uh, benefits that you have gained apart from uh, the organizational side, maybe on the technical side, um, with my front ends, what, what comes to your mind? So I think the first thing that comes to my mind is that uh, with the first split, the split in vertical micro front ends that we did, uh, we immediately provided to the different teams uh, a certain level of autonomy, which is uh, really hard to get 
if you don't uh, if you don't set up something like this. When I say autonomy, I want to talk more about the engineering side. So you are, as a team, you are responsible for that vertical micro front end, and you are responsible end to end, which means you can pick your uh, preferred front end library or the uh, the solution that you like the most. You can pick your testing. Uh, library. You can pick whatever other state management you may or may not need. But it's the freedom to say, hey, you are a new team. You may have different business needs to fulfill. As a company, I'm not giving you the, uh, the rules to follow as per which is the testing framework, how to do, how to use React in this way, or no, sorry, we use Vue.js. You cannot use React. This is this was given up to the team. Um, is it is it's important to to say that especially at the beginning we didn't start with fragmentation as a goal. So not every single of this micro front end had to be different, and we actually made similar choices to be, be, begin with. But the idea of evolution within every single team, I think, is very powerful because made us. Uh, creating this architecture to allow a team to be autonomous and to expand their uh, their horizon, technically speaking, in their vertical micro frontends because they had the capability of doing so. If we compare it to a classical other structure that you may you may have, which is don't get me wrong, totally fine. You can have a standard single page application, different teams responsible for different pages or components, and that's perfectly fine. But if the single page application is using React, you're definitely not going to use Angular in a in a part of React. Probably technically you could, you can, but should you? Do you want to? Um, and it's not only about about React or Angular or, or, or whatever uh, uh, rendering library is about the uh, also the tooling you have when you build uh, part of when you build when you run your 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 test. Uh, I think the, the the first big benefit was the um, the uh, the engineering and technological autonomy. So autonomy on different aspect, but. To me, the most important one was the the, uh, the technological side of the autonomy. Yeah, I remember uh, when uh, we had like teams working with Webpack, other others with Rollup, and the cross contamination uh, uh, that we have uh, between teams on uh, building uh, similar things, uh, but uh, uh, in different ways that enable maybe the the teams working with Webpack seeing differently the way how they were making the build compared to the uh, teams who doing Rollup and vice versa. I think this cross contamination uh, enabled a lot of discussion that was useful for uh, the outcome of the uh, the system and um, uh, based on that are there other let's say benefits that you have seen or experienced in the last I, I would say eight years by now it's probably eight yeah uh, it probably uh, I haven't thought about a, a real order in which I would put them but definitely deployments it, mm. it played such a big and important part Um at the beginning, it was more about uh, team A is joining six months after team B, so they will release a different cadence, they will have different things. But then uh, when you are working with seven, eight, I think we reached also nine vertical micro frontends at some point, you don't want to, to do release trains on uh, 30, 40, 50 people working on the this, this, this same thing. It could work. I'm not saying it's impossible, but given the choice, why? And uh, the uh, the importance of the team uh, doing that on their own was was a key for us because as a central, um, I was working in, in a team that was pro providing these solution, these tools for others to to consume and to be aut aut autonomous. Uh, and I remember how happy I was the first time that a team was deploying that without me or others even know about it, because that was the, the goal. Of course, at the beginning, there is the training, there is the onboarding, you do this. We built a lot of uh, tooling uh, and, and other things. And uh, so at the beginning, you do that 
holding each other ends because it's the first time you've never done it be before and 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 that's beautiful and then after one month two months the team starts to do it on their own and i remember that the first time i saw their re re releases going through through the, the dashboard without me being aware so oh the help pages team is releasing it autonomously i was like yes we did it it's working and uh, it was not because of the load on a central team is because there was no need of a central coordination of of of, of the re releases but it goes beyond the 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 releases because vast majority of the feature and the improvement that we were bringing at product so at business level were handled entirely by the single teams so there was less central coordination and more um power to all the different teams to deliver the value for the customers. Totally. Uh, I fully agree with you. I think uh, uh, here there is a lot to unpack because uh, I think the, it's interesting also to highlight a couple of things. Uh, yes, they were autonomous, but there was always the, the possibility to use the say what uh, the, the company put, uh, the guardrails that the company put together. So uh, we had like a unique CI CD pipeline for everyone, but they have every team has the capability to uh, change and tweak uh, the steps in order to achieve uh, the, the deployment of optimizing the um, the final artifact that should uh, land into into production. So that was pretty cool. But there is one thing, uh, sort of two things that I would like to uh, let's say highlight, and uh, I would like you to to tell us um, uh, let's say more about that. Uh, so one was the deployment because I think on the deployment we we spend a lot of time and, and thoughts around that. So probably it would be great if you can share a bit of that. And the second part would be. Um, the the core team, how, how we started and how then it became uh, instead distributed. Yeah, so I think deployment it was particularly interesting uh, at the time for the nature of our business. So uh, we were and we still are still are a global business in several countries, and uh, we needed a very particular granularity on the freedom of the. Um, uh, of of the deployment that we had to 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 do we needed to have the granularity to deploy all in a certain country only for certain specific part of the application for specific micro, micro front ends so you may have an update for the landing pages in uh, canada uh, from version x to version y so that level granularity was needed for business requirements because in one uh, in Europe, you may have the Champions League final and you maybe don't want to release something on the very same day of the Champions League final, or at least not a few hours be before that. But a bug fix in Japan on the help pages to help customer finding a specific piece of information was needed. So we were able to do that. And uh, with this very much granularity that was needed, we had to come up with a way of building that granularity. So we, we had, um, I would say, a front-end speaking, relatively complex system, but also simple because we were leveraging um, AWS Lambdas at the very beginning, and we were building on the Lambdas. Um, we had our own custom build system because it was nothing that was fulfilling our needs uh, back then. At least now there is much more choice. And uh, we uh, we ended up with this huge amount of artifacts being created and orchestrated across uh, across several lambdas uh, in uh, multiple locations, all running in parallel. I don't even remember how many artifacts we were building all at, at the same time. Uh, but it was pretty exci exciting because we started with that. So we started with... Uh, getting down a strong foundation for the other teams to be able to do everything we talked so so we talked about so far so the autonomy the releases all of that spoiler alert doesn't come for free so we we invested heavily in those custom tooling bespoke tooling probably doing it from scratch today would take less custom there there are more uh, off the shelf solutions especially around ci that allows you to uh, to do these kind of things but 
back then we had to go quite bespoke, I, I would say, but it was very uh, exciting to see how we uh, harness some of the technology that were not used for these kind of steps before. So Lambda, of course, was was already known, but not a lot in the context of, of CI/CD, at least. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think uh, uh, we made uh, quite a lot of adventurous choices uh, back in the days uh, for fulfilling uh, what we had. But we learned a lot, I guess, uh, and uh, that was a very interesting approach on what we have done. So um, what, for, from, from your perspective, okay, so let's take a step back. What's the, the, the thing uh, you would do differently if you go back in the past and you speak with uh, yourself of eight years ago? Hmm. Good question. Uh, I think I mentioned briefly before that uh, building an infrastructure for micro front end is not as easy as building maybe a, a simple single page application. Uh, so I I think it's important to uh, understand that and to make make sure that you do something for that. Um, what do I mean? We did invest uh, in the build pipeline a lot. And I remember that was part of the good call, even with a bit of hindsight saying, okay, this is needed because no matter what, we have to have reliable pipelines for everyone to build and deploy autonomously. Um, but at, at, at the same time, I don't think we invested as much into the developer experience for uh, running and uh, uh, especially for new joiners. I always imagine a new joiner arriving to the zone and they have to work on the uh, landing page, micro frontend. And uh, as much as we try to make it user friendly or new joiners friendly, it was not as friendly as a single thing, uh, as a single, single page, a single, single page application, a simple single page application. So the, the learning curve was definitely a, a bit steeper. And uh, with a bit of hindsight, we had to do quite a lot of onboarding. So maybe if we would have spent two, two months, one month, or definitely sometime be before with some, uh, custom CLI, some specific uh, build helpers, uh, or even something that we discover after, like uh, a, a real-time swapping of one of the micro frontends. So those were tools that arrived at some point, but they arrived because we reached a point where people were in need of that. And uh, it probably could have saved some time uh, to prepare some of those things beforehand, now, do you know all that you're going to need on day one? I'm not sure, but the, I can see definitely as an area that we could have improved. Yeah, I think uh, back in the days, uh, we were talking 2016, 2017, uh, there was definitely a lack of material around this topic. So we had to, let's say, be bleeding edge, uh, more than cutting edge. Uh, on uh, figuring out uh, a lot of things by by our own, but um, um, I think you mentioned one thing that currently everyone would think immediately. Oh, yeah, they use much federation because uh, loading at runtime a micro front end is uh, what what much federation does very well. But can you tell us a bit more uh, how what did we do back in the days, or explain to the audience what did we do, and also why we did that in that way? Yeah. Uh... So the, my um, obvious choice, this state, my obvious choice, I, I'm de definitely leaning towards uh, module federation because in some aspect is not that different from uh, from uh, what we did back then when there wasn't an off the shelf solution. There wasn't even the name. Micro, micro front end was something that people kind of knew they needed or they did something, but without giving it a name. And without a name, it's hard to talk about it. Yes, of course, people were working big org and creating big uh, uh, front-end and complex front-end ap application, but there was no culture and no um, uh, uh, and no literature, no document, nothing about it. And so what we did in, in our case was to, um, we created, um, UI less, 
um, orchestrator, a front-end or orchestrator, uh, which we call Bootstrap. And that bootstrap was bootstrapping, and it is still bootstrapping our application in a sense uh, where when you download, when you go actually even right now on uh, www.dazon.com, it will download bootstrap first. And the goal of the orchestrator is to decide and to um, abstract some of the common um functionality of the app across the zone, abstract them away from the pure business focused ones and mounting on the page the vertical micro frontends. It manages uh, things such as uh, sign in, sign up, which APIs to call, et cetera, et cetera. So it offers a layer of uh, things that several vertical micro front end would have needed and that they were part of the very specific um, company uh, needs. So in our case, it's very important to understand where you are geographically, which is your language, which is surprisingly more complex than uh, what I would have ever thought. Um, but that's the beauty, pros and cons of being global. And all those little things, those little abstractions were hidden away from the vertical micro frontends, which were loaded entirely in the page. The vertical micro frontend per se was a single page application. In theory, you could have loaded that even without Bootstrap, but it was created to live in the context where Bootstrap was there and Bootstrap was mounting these uh, vertical micro micro frontends in the page and eventually unmounting them and mounting them uh, again, especially if you're navigating through. Uh, I think it's important to under understand that uh, since every team was developing these different micro frontends, uh, going between one and micro frontend to another one may not be as cheap as navigating within the same micro, micro frontend because there is some unmounting, mounting, uh, garbage collector stuff being um, not observed anymore, uh, memory being released. So there is some stuff. That's why it's very important uh, the, the thinking, the beginning, the, the, the bit we, we open with, the idea of starting from business and user flows in your application to minimize the amount of time you are switching between micro frontends. Not because it's crazy expensive, but because you should avoid to, to, to do that if possible. I think the, um, the thing that you were referring at the beginning around using domain-driven design to guide you were towards the, the right split uh, was quite critical, uh, especially for reducing these uh, um, uh, let's say this jump for for the customers because I remember when we had the first discussion we were saying okay so let's see what is the the flow for uh, an authenticated user uh, what is the flow for a non authenticated user or a user that ha has an account but um, he has just to uh, sign in because maybe he changed the, the laptop or is a new new device stuff like that and we spent uh, quite a lot of time analyzing that part for slicing properly and reducing these this friction if you want. The spite was small because at the end of the day, people uh, would uh, uh, download probably gigabyte for watching content for hours. Uh, but in reality, uh, it's important also to think about these tiny uh, things in, in general. So I think it's, it's a, a pretty good story so far, um, but uh, obviously not everything uh, uh, is perfect, right? So uh, for sure, uh, you have experienced some pain and maybe there is still some pain in some areas. Can you tell us a bit more about this side of microfrontends? Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, I, I think I can mention the very, probably the biggest change we did uh, at, at some point in the zone um, history, which was the in introduction of a slightly different uh, type of micro frontend. So we started with vertical because that was our main goal. Uh, but, and uh, over the, the year, we adjusted the decision sometime in, in, in some cases. So I think it's really important to remember that the decision you take on the first day about how to, to split 
needs to be re revisited because maybe you are changing the company structure or you are changing um, other things. So, for example, we uh, the authentication microphone ten at some point got split into the sign in and sign up because. In theory, you're not jumping a lot between those two flows. So we thought we were mature enough to have two separate teams responsible for these two journeys. And that's just an example to revisit and to uh, always challenge your previous decision because your context may, may be different now. So um, the, the, the key point was that one of our microphones, and the main one where the player was, when the rail was, uh, it was getting a little bit too large and we uh, so we had to take some decisions ab ab about okay how are we splitting this up does that make sense and there there were some sub pages which are the kind of the first candidate that you want to look at when you try to further split a vertical microphone but in that case, those pages, people were jumping around because sometimes you want to go to search, sometimes to schedule, but the experience was still there. So it didn't feel like not, not really worth, especially from a user journey point of view, to split that. And we had pretty complex uh, um, a part of the application, such as the player. So we grown our own uh, team. We had our own bespoke player. We were investing more. And we ended up realizing that the player team right now, which was part of this um, catalog, micro front end, was still organizing some sort of release trains with the catalog teams. And they were coordinating very different departments that had to come together. I need to release this. No way. I need to release that. And we're like, didn't we kind of wanted to avoid that? Uh, we were in a more mature state. So we de decided also to add the possibility uh, to add horizontal microphone then. So within the same page, uh, there are part of your user experience which may be important enough and relevant enough for your business, such as the player in our context for a streaming company, which may be required to be uh, their own microphone It poses different challenges and different um, uh, uh, and the, the, the different benefits, but for us, it was pretty much needed to ensure the uh, what we wanted to achieve in the first place, the aut aut autonomy. Uh, would I have started straight away with the vertical and horizontal? Probably not. We arrived there as a need of a specific problem, uh, but that is something that I, I think it's... Uh, it shows how your project can evolve and even splitting your domain may lead to a different uh, decision along the, the way. Yeah, totally. And uh, um, I, I fully agree. I remember clearly that thing uh, that, that uh, uh, let's say, we spent like uh, weeks discussing the method for uh, for loading the, this uh, horizontal mic front end uh, into the the vertical one because uh, uh, there was a push to have everything at runtime. I was a bit nervous to be honest because uh, um, let's say at runtime uh, uh, everything basically break up our testing strategy, uh, especially with manual QAs. And uh, I remember clearly when uh, when I was there, I read the proposal, and then we we found finally an agreement where the major release uh, it wouldn't uh, be possible to load at runtime, uh, but only the minor bug fixing in a sampler uh, approach, where um, that at least provide uh, a bit of guarantees that if, if there is a breaking change, at least we go through the whole chain of tests that we had we, we had put in place back in the day. So that's definitely something cool. Okay, so I have uh, another question before we wrap up um, for you uh, that is around what, so imagine that you have like a good friend of yours that uh, wants to start with microphone dance. What would be your recommendation or your suggestion for, uh, uh, let's say, having a good experience with microphone dance? My first thought would be about the, uh, what are your goals? And when I say goals, I mean uh, uh, an holistic view of your goals. Um, we, 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 we started with the, 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 uh, with the, the focus on the fact that my, my front ends are more often there, there than not an organizational 
answer rather than a pure technical. Is a technical solution to answer to an organization or a company need. So if someone is starting this journey and they they want to do my my, my micro front end because it's cool because they've seen model federation they've seen uh, Luigi library or single SPA one of the fantastic and amazing library out there and they just want to use it uh, it's not free so the uh, part where you have to deal with more moving parts than just a single one has a cost so are you ready to take that cost and for which reasons are you ready to uh talk during an incident or doing a customer support um session are you ready to talk about several front-end versions because you have suddenly several moving parts you don't have just one you have more than one so if that's okay for you, it means you have a strong reason. And again, your reason may be more on the organizational side. Are you a team, a single team? I would struggle quite a bit to so suggest you to create these, uh, um, uh, this architecture, which is compared to uh, another that doesn't involve all these moving parts is a little bit more complicated. And you need to have a justification for that complexity. Do you, do you have that justification? Are you a single team with no idea of growth in the next one or two, two years? Mm. Are you two teams? Mm. Let's talk about it. Depends. Like, okay, two teams now, is that going to grow? Not. Two teams is still like... Uh, the number of interaction it gets, I think, is exponential, if I'm not mistaken. So two teams is still one-to-one -one relationship. Three teams, you need to start to organize a lot of things. Four teams, it gets way crazier, the amount of things you have to coordinate. So team size and evolution of your company play, they probably play an important part, if not one of the most important part in your decision. Although it, I found it funny and beautiful because we are solving a company problem with a technical solution, which I love it. That's great, honestly. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, I would like to, let's say, first of all, thank you about uh, this first uh, session. I hope that you enjoy as much as I do. And uh, the other thing is, if you don't know, Max is uh, uh, also um, uh, he has also created a live project with Manning uh, that basically resembling the architecture that uh, he built in the zone. Um, and uh, I will share the link uh, in the description of the video so you can uh, take a look. And if you're interested, uh, you can reach him out. Uh, I'm sure he would be more than pleased to, uh, let's say, answer any question if you have any. Uh, so any final words that you want to share with us? Actually, yes. I think it's right now we are in a more mature situation, front-end uh, and micro front-end wise. So I think there is a lot to, to read and to understand. But I think this is the key. So the, the key is that right now we are talking, we are putting names, we are evolving. So 10 years ago, we may have done something that was probably some sort of micro front-ends, but it didn't have a name. It didn't have uh, an evolution. Right now, we are writing this evolution. We are creating the history and we are evolving towards this history. So very excited. Thank you very much, Max. And I hope that you enjoyed this, uh, this session to all of you. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, you will like also the uh, following interviews that I'm going to do with people like Max that are living in the trenches, building micro front ends that can provide you invaluable insights uh, on uh, how the process uh, looks like and what are the pitfalls and uh, benefits of this approach. So thank you very much for attending and see you in the next interview of my 50 sets.